An X-ray diffractometer, or XRD, is an instrument used by scientists to look at the crystalline structure of materials. It's often used to identify what a material is. You've probably seen a crystal before, and typically when you think of a crystal, you think of something with geometric shapes unique to its own crystalline structure. These geometric shapes arise from the atoms being arranged in a lattice or an ordered structure. XRD capitalizes on this lattice structure. Since every crystal has a different lattice structure, every XRD measurement taken is different depending on that crystal. An XRD pattern is unique to each crystal because each crystal has a different lattice structure. An XRD uses an X-ray beam. Now, X-ray is just a high energy form of light. So the XRD shines an X-ray onto the sample and then the X-ray is diffracted through the crystalline structure of your sample. The beam of the XRD and the detector are actually arranged so that they can go through a whole wide range of angles from about five degrees to 120 degrees. So if you picture, if you're looking at a crystal and you're turning it in light, it's sparkling off different angles, right? The same kind of principle holds with an XRD, except it reflects the X-ray light. At certain angles, you're gonna get more X-rays reflected off of the lattice because the lattice is in that ordered arrangement of atoms. So the data you end up getting with an XRD is actually the angle versus the intensity of the X-rays that the detector receives. And so your data is a spectrum of sharp peaks and each peak is at a specific angle that's unique to the crystal. So if I don't know what my sample is that I'm looking at, I use an XRD and then I compare the peaks that I get to the peaks of a whole library of different minerals and crystals. And the software matches up the peaks and tells me exactly what material I'm looking at. Well, sometimes the software can be wrong. But then I just use my smarts to figure it out. So in a way, an XRD just looks at crystal sparkles. I appreciate crystal sparkles too. I found this book at a thrift store in Hawaii. It's the third edition of Dana's Textbook of Mineralogy by W.E. Ford. And inside the book is actually the name Herbert H. Cluett, and the date is January 18th, 1931. So I Googled who this was and it turns out Herbert was an active member of Pomona, California's radio club back in the early 1900s. So this book made it from Hawaii back to California. The book was copyrighted in 1898, and this third edition I think was published in about 1926. So this book is almost 100 years old. I love it. Dana's textbook of mineralogy just talks all about minerals, of course. It goes through crystallography, physical mineralogy, chemical mineralogy, and descriptive mineralogy. In it, you have these wonderful drawings of crystalline structures, and you have the actual methods of how to calculate crystalline structures. Now, what I think is really cool about this book is this actually predates X-ray diffractometry. <laughs> To me, it's amazing that scientists were able to predict crystalline structures and understand this all far before we had these fancy computer systems to do it very quickly for us. 